Saya bersama dengan Chairman and Managing Member Great Hill Capital, Thomas J. Hayes. Hayes, thank you so much for your time for CNBC Indonesia. So as we know that the U.S. inflation has recently surged to 3.7% year on year, up from the previous month's 3.2%. So naturally, this has raised concerns and questions about how Wall Street is responding to this inflationary pressure. So how is your opinion on this regard? Well, Leifa, thank you for having me. I, I think the key thing is what we saw in the Fed funds futures market is that rate height expectations following the inflation numbers for next week stayed at around 3%. So there's a very low probability of a hike at the September meeting. And even the probabilities of a rate hike for the November meeting uh, dropped down to 32.6%. It was recently as high as 50%. Uh, I think that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, you saw the ECB uh, do one hike and, and basically say they were done, uh, which implies with the U.S. inflation being much lower that the uh, Fed may in fact be done moving forward. But I think the buoyancy in the U.S. markets uh, overnight was largely due to the Arm Holdings IPO. That This was a big success uh, on the NASDAQ, and that opens the door for many new IPOs and animal spirits to come in into year-end, which will create a lot of fees for the large banks, which is a good thing. Okay, so, uh, Hayes, interestingly, while overall inflation is running above expectation, U.S. core inflation, or core PCPI for August 2023, aligns with uh, expectation. Core PPI for the same period also met the forecast 2.2% year-on-year. So how do you see this data as a sign of stability that um, maybe the Fed uh, is going to maintain uh, its interest rate on this level right now? Yeah, this is a big deal because the Fed focuses on core inflation, which backs out food and energy because energy, as we know, is very volatile. So this is the, the laser focus of the Fed is core PPI, core CPI. And to your point, they've stayed uh, subdued here on the core PPI at 2.2 uh, and the uh, core CPI in line with expectations. So this sets the stage for the Fed to walk back and to show that they are on target. And that's why I think you're going to see those November uh, expectations of a hike continue to decline as we move towards it and we get uh, more data both on the inflation numbers uh, but more importantly on the employment numbers uh, where average hourly earnings have uh, started to be more subdued and, and that's a positive thing from the Fed's point of view. Okay, in addition to inflation, other economic indicators are causing volatility. For instance, U.S. In unemployment claims for the next week, uh, for the week, I, am, uh, I mean ending September 9th, 2023, rose to 220,000, slightly above market expectation. So how do you see about this one and how uh, this will cause uh, effect to U.S. economy? Yeah, so the initial jobless claims came in a little bit lower than expectations. They have been trending up. Uh, the labor market is loosening up, which is a good thing because as people are spending down their excess savings that they received during COVID and they're running out of money, they're going back to work. And what we saw in the most recent jobs report is that the labor force participation rate increased to 62.8%, which means there's a new supply of labor. More people are going back to work, which gives the employers the upper hand and wages have stopped rising, which is a very good thing from the inflation standpoint and gives the Fed cover uh, to start to back away from the aggressive tightening cycle that they've been on uh, for over a year now. So uh, as we see um, more and more people go back to work, uh, wages will remain steady and the Fed can back off. Okay, and despite the inflation data, however, the Federal Reserve in the United States seems to be adapting to a different stance, just like uh, you said earlier that the CME Fed Watch uh, tool indicates a 97% prob probability of the Fed maintaining interest rate in the upcoming weeks. So how this will affect the financial market across the globe, both for developing and developed countries, just like Indonesia? Yeah, this is a big deal. So uh, as the Fed gets out of the way and they stop hiking, which we think they're, they're actually done, what you're going to see is a resumption of the downtrend of the U.S. dollar. If you recall, 
The U.S. dollar strength peaked in October and fell pretty precipitously into the end of the year. And then we've had these counter trend bounces over the last few months, uh, partially due to the debt ceiling, partially due to continued tightening. As the Fed steps away, what we're going to see is a resumption of the softness of the U.S. dollar. And what we know historically over the past several decades is when the dollar weakens and emerging market currencies strengthen, which is our expectation over the next nine to 12 months, what you see is a massive inflow of investors into emerging market equities and Indonesia and China will be major beneficiaries of that shift. So the number one thing that needs to happen and the team now supports it is the Fed needs to be done hiking, which we believe that they are, uh, which will enable a resumption of the downtrend in the US dollar, which uh, started in last October, which will yield investment flows into emerging markets. And I think you're gonna see some very positive equity returns in the region over the next 12 to 24 plus months. Okay, and how about uh, this one will affect to uh, rupiah, for instance? Yeah, well, as the dollar weakens, I think what we're going to see across the board is uh, emerging market currencies and foreign currencies start to gar gather strength. I think the rupiah is going to go up in value. I think that's going to be a function of investment flows once the Fed is done tightening and the dollar weakens, which will also be good for uh, the Indonesian stock market and equity appreciation. So uh, I know it's been a bumpy ride for the last uh, 12 months. You've been up and then you've been sideways, but the trend is up. The demographics favor it, the balance sheet of the Indonesian country, low debt to GDP, third largest democracy. Everything is in the favor of the Indonesian economy uh, and stock market for the next uh, 24 to 36 plus months in our view. Okay, and despite concerns over rising interest rates, projections of a U.S. recession have actually diminished. Some experts even say that the United States could avoid a recession in this era of higher interest rates. So are you quite optimistic about this one? Yeah, there's no question. I, I, I believe we are going to avoid a recession. As a matter of fact, we did have a technical recession already last year in the first quarter and the second quarter of the year. GDP was actually negative. So we had the technical recession. So while everyone's waiting for the next shoe to drop, uh, it, it actually happened in the rearview mirror. And as we look forward, what we're seeing is earnings estimates for 2024 are actually going up. Uh, in the last few weeks alone, uh, for the S&P 500, estimates have gone from $246 to $248 and change. That continues to defy all the pessimist expectations. All year long, strategists have been saying earnings are gonna come down by 20%, and the exact opposite has been true. Uh, equity markets have rallied, uh, earnings expectations have gone up, and we believe that will continue to persist moving forward. Okay, one last question, Harry. So uh, once CNBC Indonesia has interviewed Joseph Stiglitz and he said that what the Fed are doing uh, so far is wrong uh, in terms of interest, uh, interest rate hike. So uh, do you agree about this one or do you have other opinion? Well, I think that the Fed wanted to make sure it tamped down inflation uh, if I was king for a day and I was running the Fed, what I would have done is focus more on quantitative tightening, reducing the size of the balance sheet and less on interest rate hikes, because what that's done, it's, it's, it's created a, an environment for housing for, we have a lot of millennials. Uh, the largest part of our population is in their early thirties, trying to start families trying to buy homes and this abrupt rise in interest rates has really hurt that that demographic in, in terms of being able to get new homes. So what I would have done is uh, reduce the size of the balance sheet and been more moderate on the interest rate hikes, maybe stopped around you know three and a half percent and brought the balance sheet down by one to one and a half trillion. But what's done is done. It's been successful. I think now that they back away, they maybe will see a couple of cuts next year to normalize things. Uh, bring things into better balance, and uh, and the economy will continue to grow and, and flourish. So uh, I do agree to some degree with your prior guest, but what's done is done. The economy is strong. The, the excess money supply is there. We do have a lot of money coming in from our infrastructure bills that hasn't yet hit the economy. So we may, in fact, need a little bit of that insurance, and uh, and we'll progress moving forward. 
Okay, so what done is done, and the economy is uh, still strong right now. So thank you so much, uh, Thomas J. Hayes, as a chairman and managing member, Great Hill Capital, for your time for CNBC Indonesia. See you again someday. Thank you so much. Have a good day.